as a man in general, it's a lot of double standards. Like, um, like we were talking about earlier, different things as far as uh, showing emotion sometimes, a lot of the time, being able to be openly uh, about emotions, about different topics, about different things, even in the sports world, or in, as we see in sports, or just everyday life. And then we already profiled judge, so it's a lot of different discrepancies. Throughout decades, men have been held to a different standard than women. Rightfully so. Men and women are indeed different. But at what point does society neglect the fact that men are also human beings and have a right to be free in mind as well as body? Men have been objectified as a tool of disposal if they don't fit in the what it is to be a man bubble. According to unwritten law, men aren't supposed to show emotion, but women can and it's acceptable because they're women. In the United States, suicide is the number one cause of death, which majority of those candidates are men. The suicide rate among males remained nearly four times higher than among females, according to the National Institute of Mental Health. The reason behind these statistics is the fact that men fear accusations of being labeled as less than a man. It's the pressures of living up to a gender biased standard. Good afternoon. I am Judge Tammy Stokes. I'm the chief judge here of the Chatham County Recorder's Court. I think that, um, generally speaking, uh, it has been more common to see men arrested than women and therefore more men in jails and in the prison system. Um, historically, I think certainly that's been the case. I think anecdotally that's certainly the case. <clears throat> and while I don't have the specific numbers, I think the numbers will bear that out as well. Um, I do think that um, in recent years, um, the arrest rates for women have been on the incline, but certainly by far, men occupy the local jails and in the prison system far more. Um, I'm Sergeant Sean Carr. I work for the Savannah Police Department. The law states that if you have a domestic violence case, you have to arrest the primary physical aggressor. That's whoever laid hands on who. You know, um, the the. It, it does get tricky though in each situation because as soon as you walk into a house everybody says everybody hit everybody and you know so you know the seasoned officer the the the, the supervisor someone comes out and they try to lend you know their expertise in those situations i'm almost six one i'm 230 pounds you know um <clears throat> and and my first wife she was like five to 140 pounds right but if you came to my house, you knocked on the door, and you're an officer, you knocked on the door, and I got scratches all over my face, and she's saying, he hit me, he hit me, and you can't, the, you can't see anything on her. I could cause a lot of damage if I did hit her. You know, you, you have to investigate the situation, you know? So it, I've seen it both ways, you know? It's just that it's unfortunate that it does seem that the higher case is in men. Jason Hancock, see, educated. I'm a single father and my everyday life is kind of hard due to the fact that America is used to the mother figure. So if I, if I, I have full custody of my son. So in order to get full custody, a man has to legitimize the child. When, it, when a mother give birth, automatic mother. So the situation with my son, it was super crazy that when I went to, to, the, to the court, I had to show a document, I had to fight for it. Um, years straight, I had to deal with defects. You gotta come to my house and see if I'm fit. Um, at first, it was temporary. A temporary, like a couple of days, then it came a year, now it's permanent. But I had to fight so much. More than 90% of children of divorced or single parents live with their mothers. As a man, this is your job, women. Man, man, you supposed to do that. Yeah. Women, girl, you strong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Alec and Thomas, educated. As we were speaking earlier, when you brought up the topic, we spoke more about the fact that 
as a single father, you don't get a lot of credit a lot of time. Or even as a father who's in a child's life, it's a big double standard, a big discrepancy because it's always um, supposed to be women, I guess, are supposed to be the main caretaker. They're the best parent for the child in a lot of situations, and that's not always correct. And there's a lot of men out here who take care of their kids, have their kids frequently in their kids' life, and then when we are there, it's just like, hey, whatever, take it for granted. Stuart Thompson. CEO of a healthcare business, part owner of a healthcare agency. So the woman, she is pretty much, as long as the man is not actually in her life, she gets benefits and you know help from government assistance. So I think that it's some things that pushes those out and make it a reality to what's really going on out here. So that's something that I deeply believe that is rooted in the whole situation with the double stand standard of a what is uh, looked for in a man and what is looked for in a woman. Officer Schenker, uh, patrol officer. We live in the generation where people still believe that a man should be hard and motionless and they should be on a certain line. And if you're not, you're either left or right of that. It's not an end to all means. As men, we have to speak up. You can't be afraid to express your thoughts. We are entitled to feel it. If you don't voice it, who will? It's okay to be human. It's okay to feel emotion. We must raise awareness. There's strength in numbers. You have voices. Use it. Seek help when you need it. Vote. Elect officials who are sympathetic. The change is in your hands.